Now that my chum bot has dropped you into my clutches, you'll be forced to eat at the chum bucket. What? You mean you kidnapped us just to sell us your fast food? Come on, it's a standard marketing technique. Now the plot of this next episode is really cool. It's enemy in law, and it's all about Plankton falling in love with Mr. Krabs' mother. Like dude is trying to riz up his enemies' moms, bro. Like Plankton's wildin' in this episode. It's even more funny because Betsy Krabs is like an old lady, dude. But anyways, Plankton's got some weird interests. I mean, I do too. I like exposing mistakes in cartoons. So here's the first mistake from this episode, Enemy in Law. Let's do it. <coughs> I've reservations for two tonight. Your gentleman caller awaits. Yeah, so this one's a rough continuity error. So as you guys seen, when Plankton walks into the Krusty Krab with that rose to riz up Mr. Krabs' mom, we can see this burger sticker on the window right here and remember this as it's important. As once Plankton gets inside, where did it go? We're looking at the exact same window that it was on and now it's just gone during this scene. Seriously, first it's there as you can see here, but then where is it during this shot? Very, very weird. The same thing actually happens again. The poster's there, or I guess the sticker's there, and then it disappears. So very, very strange mistake in this episode. And here's another one. Just dial the number and ask her to dinner. Come on, you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty straightforward. So Grapple Gang, this is a phone, all right? You guys know what a phone is. And as you can see, this is where the number zero would be, all right? This is also the number symbol, and this is also the star key. But at one point, when we get to see Plankton's phone, it's missing all of those things. It's missing the zero, it's missing the number symbol, and it's missing the star key. Which I mean, to be fair, this is like an, a cartoon for kids, and like they live in like Bikini Bottom world. But yeah, that's not how a phone is supposed to look and it's most likely a mistake and yeah let's keep it moving head over to another episode guys this one's gonna be a lot of fun i was merely emulating my latest media obsession kenny the cat kenny the cat wedding clam's name is a uh... The cat! Let's head over to modern Spongebob for this next one. The episode's from season 12, which is a pretty good season, and the episode is Kenny the Cat. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be blunt, I'm not a big fan of this episode. I think Kenny the Cat is kind of annoying, but it has its good moments. What it also has, of course, though, is this really bad mistake, and this one's bad. The art team got in trouble for this one, for sure. Roll the footage. <laughs> this gets real uncomfortable after a while. You guys might have missed it, but during this scene where Kenny gets his oxygen tank, if we zoom in on his right foot and pause, um, the animators forgot to color in and fill in his right foot. It's just completely transparent, and dude, look at how weird that looks. These are the mistakes where it's actually kind of bad, like I'll always give Spongebob a break because it's 2D animation, and 2D animation is hard, but mistakes like this where it's like a couple of seconds where somebody's foot was not colored in is pretty rough, so yeah. Let's over to another episode, guys. Lots of really cool mistakes coming up. We're gonna light a fire under you, boy -o. Oh, oh no, that's gonna hurt! Listen up, mister. No more fooling around. You're here to eat. And eat. And then eat some more. Next up, we've got an episode from Season 9, some modern Spongebob. Well, actually, is Season 9 even considered modern Spongebob anymore? This season came out like 10 years ago. But anyways, the episode's What's Eating Patrick, and this episode has two spicy mistakes. Here's the first one. I'll just have 47 Krabby Patties, please. I had a big breakfast, so I'm not that hungry. Squidward, did you get a new haircut? Yeah, this one's really, really, really bad. So, when Mr. Krab realizes that Patrick should join the competition, let's take a look at the order here sign in the background of the Krusty Krab, as the text that's normally on it is just gone, dude. Like, where is it? This is how it normally looks. Here's a shot from any other episode. It normally says order here, but in What's Eating Patrick during this one scene, the animators just completely forgot to put the text there, and it's just an empty sign. So, yeah. Yeah, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode with, I'm not even gonna call these ones weird. These ones are wild mistakes. Let's keep it moving. I can protect my groceries now. 
Here's another episode from Modern Spongebob. In this one, I actually really like it. The episode is Squid Defense, and it's all about Squidward wanting to learn karate so he can kick some butt after nearly getting robbed at the beginning of the episode. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show the mistakes, but look at this clip of Squidward nearly getting mugged. Um, hello? It's considered rude not to answer. Ah! I gotta get out of here! <laughs> Dude, Squidward almost got caught lacking, bro. He almost got smoked. But anyways, let's smoke Nickelodeon by revealing this mistake. The rubbery arms and the doughiness in this area. We obviously All right, I'm ready. We've been through this. Yeah, so any hardcore SpongeBob fan should have caught this one. But take a look at this clip from Culture Shock when Squidward does his little tentacle dance. And as you can see, he has this many tentacles. Remember this as it's important. As in Squid Defense, when Sandy pokes him in the stomach, which is hilarious, by the way, Squidward seems to only have two tentacles, which is like incorrect. He's supposed to have this many. Look at those dance moves, though. Like, damn, Squidward, bust a move, my boy. <laughs> Anyways, here's another mistake from this episode. You missed the spot. <laughs> this one's quick and you guys definitely should have caught it. So take a look at this random PNG of Sandy right here, our favorite squirrel. And what you'll notice is like many squirrels, she has a tail. Now this is a pretty common mistake in SpongeBob. It happens fairly often. Um, Sandy's missing something while she's holding the umbrella. Where is her tail? It's gone. Like I said, somewhat of a common mistake in SpongeBob, but yeah, here's another mistake from this episode. There's a lot, guys, so be prepared. It's a delicate art that helps you protect yourself. Yeah, fine. Great. Repeat after me. Hi -ya! Hi -ya! Oh, whatever. Hi -ya. So for this one, you really need to get a good eye at the frames, all right? It's very important you guys pay close attention for this one. But when Squidward says, oh, whatever, hi-ya, and then does some karate moves, there's something up with Sandy's white teeth. Now, here's a random shot of Sandy from this same episode, and as you can see, she has very white teeth. Our girl be brushing her teeth on the regular. But later on in the episode, I guess she lost her toothbrush or something, as look, her teeth change color slightly. If you look, they're actually more like the same color as the bottom part of her mouth. Here's a side-by-side -side so you can see they're definitely not as white as they normally are, and this is somewhat of a coloring error here. What do you guys think happened? Let me know. But here's one more mistake from this episode, and this one's really bad if you're a classic SpongeBob fan. <laughs> oh wait, I, I don't get it. SpongeBob, open up! <laughs> um, Squidward? It's just Gary. So this happens at the very beginning of the episode. And first things first, as you can see, SpongeBob and Gary are just chilling on the couch, right? They're just having a chill night, probably watching some Netflix or actually Paramount Plus, don't tell Nickelodeon. They maybe even got a Krusty Krab pizza on the way, they're chilling. The most important thing is the couch though. As when Squidward eventually comes to SpongeBob's house panicking and SpongeBob lets him inside, dude, where did the couch go? Did like SpongeBob and Gary put it away so Squidward could come in? It was literally just there seconds ago, as you can see here, and then now it's gone. So a really funny mistake, if anything. And here's more from another episode. Oh, look. It's a picture I took of you the first time I ever came here. Ah, look at you, so young and happy. Where do the years go? Speaking of SpongeBob's couch, the season three episode, Party Pooper Pants, has a really funny mistake revolving around it. Take a look at this. Yeah, this one's simple. So as you guys seen before, normally SpongeBob's couch looks like this. It's like blue and green. It's always looked like this. But in Party Pooper Pants near like the beginning, SpongeBob's couch is just completely colored like incorrectly. It's like red or something. It's never been colored like this since or before this. I just thought I'd mention this one because it's funny. And let's head over to another episode with more mistakes. Let's go gang, 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 gang. And furthermore, I will carry out my duty. Crime and punishment. Punishment and crime. 
And the hall! Which reminds me of an extremely long speech written by the greatest hall monitor of all time. For this next one, we're going back in time to the good old days of SpongeBob with Hall Monitor. This is a fan favorite of an episode where Mrs. Puff makes SpongeBob Hall Monitor for the week, but SpongeBob takes it way too seriously, fam, and starts going around thinking he's like a real cop. I'm gonna show some funny clips from this episode first, but then we're gonna get into two spicy mistakes. I love this episode, dude. And as a matter of fact, Grapple Gang, after I'm done making this video, I'm literally going to go and watch the episode. And you should too, after you're done watching this video, of course. But here's the first mistake. Let's take a look at this. Poor rookie. All right, I'm on my way back. Hurry, SpongeBob. I think it's getting dark. Just put on your siren, I'll be right there. This one happens really fast, guys, and I had to rewatch the scene multiple times to even catch it, but during this scene where Patrick says it is getting dark, if we look, some of these buildings right here move slightly to the right. Here's a side-by-side -side where you can see before and after, and just, yeah, they slightly just move randomly. Very weird, and here's another mistake from this episode that's just as weird, if not worse. Afternoon, son. Hello, brothers. Son, we're looking for the maniac. Like I said, this one is way, way, way worse. So, when the police officers arrive and ask Patrick about the maniac, and they just like make fun of him about it, it's really funny, there is a massive mistake with Officer John Slugfish over here, specifically his eyes. As you can see, he is an orange fish. But during this one shot right here, the animators made a mistake and gave him the same like eye lids as the other police officer. So he's orange, but if you look, his eye lids are are green, which is totally a mistake. His eyelids should be orange. As a matter of fact, here's a quick shot from earlier on in this scene, and his eyelids are orange. But in this one shot, they're green, which is a massive mistake, dude. Like, a really bad mistake, too. Not as bad as this next one, though, guys. Let's head over to another episode. Do they give a show to just anybody over there? Pretty much. My mom gave me this one for my birthday. Really? Yeah, I wanted a guitar or a star named after me, but you know, whatever. I guess a TV show is cool. Next up, we've got a season seven banger. I'm talking about Tentacle Vision, an episode where Squidward gets his very own TV show, which is perfect for Squidward and egomaniac. Now, I'm gonna get into the mistakes, but this episode's really good, so here's some funny scenes from the episode, and then we'll get right into the really bad mistakes in this episode. Take a look at these funny scenes first. How sophisticated. Has been cancelled. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't made the coffee yet. Squidward! Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. Squidward, you're on TV. Come look. I know I'm on TV. See the camera? Dude, there are so many funny moments in this episode. I love it. What I don't love, though, is this mistake. It's bad. Take a look at this. So you have to pay close attention to catch this one. So when Squidward takes the remote, we can see that the remote has this one red button right here. Let's remember this. As in the next scene, once we see the remote again, where's the red button? It's suddenly just a black button. And look guys, I highly doubt Squidward changed his remote, his TV remote mid episode. So yeah, you can tell the animators colored it as red at first, but then forgot and colored it as black. And that's not even it for tentacle vision. Here's another spicy mistake from this episode. Today on Squidward Chat. Squidward on TV? <gasps> if you thought that one was bad, this one's much worse. So take a look at this shot of SpongeBob's living room from season one. And as you can see, SpongeBob has always had his iconic couch. It's a really nice couch. It's like green and blue and it's iconic. It's been there ever since like the first episode. Well, in Tentacle Vision, when Gary is seen changing the channel, where is the couch? It's just missing from the living room entirely. Like it should be right there, but it's gone. And to make things even more funny, when SpongeBob 
Caleb eventually comes back into the room. Look, it reappears here when it just wasn't there during this scene, which is just funny more than anything. They just didn't draw the couch. And here's another one from Tentacle Vision. This one has a lot of mistakes. You're on TV too. As I was saying. Now this one's kind of minor. It's kind of like a consistent mistake throughout SpongeBob, but this right here is a PNG of Squidward tentacles. And a big part of Squidward's design are the wrinkles on his forehead. They're always there. Even during certain facial expressions, he'll still have them there because he's such a miserable, tired squid. Well, when Squidward says moron after SpongeBob leaves his house in this scene, where are his wrinkles? It's only for like a frame, so it's not a big deal. But look at how weird Squidward looks without his iconic forehead wrinkles, you know? Maybe he's finally taking care of his health for once. All right, let's keep it moving over to another episode, guys. Lots of mistakes to come. Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob, careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Patrick, the lid's already off. Oh, now it's my turn. I say this all the time, but the best episodes of SpongeBob are from seasons one, two, and three. So I'm stoked to be talking about Wet Painters, a season three banger of an episode. You know what's coming though, guys. It's time for that childhood to be ruined. Here's the first mistake from this episode. The two of you are to paint the inside of me house. So if I see even one drop on anything but wool, so have fun with the job. Did you guys catch it? Well, listen closely as this one's a little complicated. So when Mr. Krabs brings SpongeBob and Patrick over for the first time, and he reveals his big plan for them to paint his house, we can see him open his door. And first things first, as you can see, there is no doorknob on this door, which is fine. But more importantly though, if we look at how the door opens and closes, it opens to the left to the inside of Mr. Krabs' house. Okay, remember this? It opens to the left to the inside of his house. Well, here Here's the problem. As this scene progresses, we get this shot right here where SpongeBob and Patrick are backing up, and look, there's a doorknob now. In the original shot I mentioned, there's no doorknob, but now there is. And then, once we see SpongeBob and Patrick go in the house during this shot shortly after, the door now opens to the right to the outside of Mr. Krabs' house. Here's a side by side of how the door opened before and how it opens now. Right there, you can see a massive mistake. And as I said, there's like a door handle or doorknob now when that wasn't there in the original shot. So a funny little continuity error here in this episode, and here's another mistake from this same episode. <laughs> oh, now I see it. Did it work? No. Did it work? No. Oh. Did it work? No. Did you guys catch it? This one's pretty quick and pretty simple, but if you really think about it, how did paint get smeared on both sides of the dollar? Here's the scene where the paint actually gets on the dollar, and then it's faced up towards the wall. So like, how would it get on both sides? Yeah, I'm overthinking this one, but technically a mistake if you think about it. But guys, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode of SpongeBob, and trust me, you won't want to miss these mistakes. This is where things get wild. Wait, wait. Test. Coming in hot is the season one episode, Boating School. Now this episode is iconic, not only because it's a season one episode, but also because it's the debut episode of Mrs. Puff. This was her first appearance in the show ever, and who knew that she would go on to be such an iconic character. Now, let's dive into that first mistake. It's a rough one. Take a look at this. What's the problem? I can't pass my boating exam. Testing, 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 testing. So as you guys just seen, we get a couple of shots where SpongeBob goes to sit in his library room, all right? And what's most important here is the color of the chair, all right? As you can see, it is black. Remember this, all right? Remember this. As eventually, when Patrick sits there, look, now it's purple. Here's a quick side-by-side. -side. First it was black, now it's purple. Yeah, that is a mistake. A chair doesn't just randomly change color. It is a season one episode though, so I'll give them a break, all right? 2D animation is hard, but cheese. Anyways though, here's another mistake from the same episode. All you have to do is get on the track. Okay, you're coming to your first turn.
So, in order for SpongeBob to get his driver's license, he has to complete this obstacle course to prove that he can drive. Obvious, right? Now, here's the issue. When we first see the order of the obstacles in this shot before SpongeBob arrives, we can see that the order goes like this. All right, remember this. When SpongeBob finally arrives, the order of the obstacles completely changes. Again, here's a side by side, and you can see at first it looked like this, now it looks like this. The obstacles are like the same, but the order is entirely different now, so totally a mistake. And guys, let's keep it moving and head over to another SpongeBob episode with some of the worst mistakes I've ever seen. Two <laughs> <laughs> whole days without nonsense. For a good run, Mr. Squidward. But we both knew it couldn't last. We've got a season 12 episode coming in hot next. The episode is Hiccup Plague. Here are some funny clips from this episode. And then of course, we're gonna get right into the mistakes after. So hang tight. I have a foolproof hiccup cure. Using an old Navy trick. Old Navy trick. Okay, go for it. Boo. Uh, try drinking water upside down. Try a chair. <laughs> All right, it is mistake time, baby. Here's the first one. Oh, hi, Mrs. Buff. Oh, hello. Yeah, so during that scene you guys just saw right there, Pearl, she's missing the P that's normally on her shirt. Here's a P and G of Pearl. As you can see, normally she has that P on it, and in this one shot, it's just missing from her shirt. It just was not drawn. Here's another mistake from this episode, though. This one's pretty spicy, too. Uh, try drinking water upside down. Try a chair. Pearl isn't the only person missing something in this episode, as during this scene outside of Sandy's tree dome, um, Mrs. Puff's spots are missing. Here's a shot of Mrs. Puff. Normally, she has these spots all over her face. And in this one shot from Hiccup Plague, where are they? Where'd they go? Because they're, they're not there. They're gone. Our next episode is from Modern SpongeBob, season 12 to be exact, and it's One Trick Sponge. This episode's all right. It's pretty much about SpongeBob learning a new magic trick. Not the best episode, in my opinion. And so let's move right into the good stuff. Well, the not so good stuff. That being the mistakes. This episode has one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Is this by any chance a trick where you produce money coins from behind people's ears? Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. No. Then what's the. Ah. Hi, Fred. Ooh. Are you going to saw my leg in half? Uh, no, th this isn't going to involve your leg. <laughs> Now listen, Grapple Gang, this one is pretty complicated, so I need you guys to pay close attention, all right? So, when SpongeBob goes to Fred's house right here, Fred is the dude who's always like, my leg! 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 Yeah, that guy. When SpongeBob goes to his house, the direction he moves would mean that Fred's house is opposite from Mr. Krabs and Pearl's house, as you can see right here. Remember this, based on this shot, it would mean that Fred's house is like opposite to Mr. Krabs. You gotta remember this. However, in a later shot, Mr. Krabs' house is nowhere to be seen and is replaced with a kelp forest. So I don't know what happened here. The animators at first drew it as if Fred's house is right across from Mr. Krabs, but then they forgot and were lazy and then just drew a kelp forest instead. Not that big of a deal because it's a cartoon, but this is still a weird mistake. Some continuity errors, but let's keep it moving and head over to our next episode. This one is crazy, guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to make this one very, very quick. Roll the footage. Here's the mistake in the episode, selling out. Do you know what's in that Krabby Patty you're eating? No. <laughs> See that? Without all your smoke and mirrors, no one would stomach this garbage. What do you say? Garbage? Okay, so this character right here is Incidental 42. And in every episode before this one, this character always has a male voice, okay? A male voice. Here's some examples. Thanks for the roses, SpongeBob. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, free Krabby Patties. This is a load of barnacles. I heard that's 
As you heard, this dude is sounds like a dude, right? But in the episode Selling Out, Incidental 42 has a female voice when he says, what did he say? Garbage? What do you say? Garbage? Really strange mistake, but let's keep it rolling, baby. Let's keep this show going. One really good episode from season 13 is Goofy Scoopers. I mean, anything Goofy Goobers related, I love. But like any episode, this episode has a mistake. Here's the mistake. Let's see if you can catch it. <laughs> I did like being a bridge. But I was built to make music. Now let's yeah. rock! This one's just really funny, but at the ending of the episode, during this close-up of Clem Clam playing the trumpet, that man is playing the heck out of that trumpet, take a look at his shirt, as the stripes on his shirt switch colors at the end. First it looks like this, but then they just switch colors, which is really strange. But let's keep it moving, gang. We've got more mistakes than this, and they're spicy. The episode Whale of a Birthday is filled to the brim when it comes to mistakes. Like, there are so many mistakes in this episode. For now, we're gonna focus on these three spicy ones. Here are some clips. Let's see if you guys can catch them. This sea pony is the cutest thing ever. Do you want to come home and be my pony? <laughs> <laughs> so this is another somewhat complicated one, but once I point it out, it'll make total sense to you guys, right? When Pearl and her friends are at the mall, as you can see here, she looks at the sea pony. I kind of want a sea pony, guys. That'd be kind of cool. But more importantly, in the first shot, it shows the dogfish tank right next to it with a clear separation of the two tanks, okay? Remember this. On one side, there is a sea pony in one tank, and then on the other side, there's the dogfish. And there's this thing right here, which clearly divides them and separates them into two different tanks. But a few seconds later, the sea pony shares a tank with the dogfish. They're just in one tank. Like, the entire art of this one spot looks completely different now, which was like a really lame mistake on the animators end. Like, I don't even know how they made this mistake. It's very easy to miss, but let's keep it moving. Mistake number two is just as spicy. Roll the footage. Oh my gosh, it's Billy Fishkin. Hi, Hi Billy. Billy. Meep. <sighs> oh, isn't he dreamy? Price check on four. Now this one isn't too big of a deal. It's still like a bad mistake, but I could understand how the animators slipped up on it. But when Pearl and her friends meet Billy over here, when facing in the front, um, her lipstick disappears for an entire frame. It's only for like one frame and then it pops back in. Like you'll only catch it by the footage being in slow motion. But I mean, it still happens. A little bit of a mistake here, not that big of a deal. Let's move over to the next mistake, which is a pretty big deal. Roll the footage. Are you guys coming to my totally coral birthday party tomorrow? Is this gonna be as totally coral as last year? When your dad passed out paper clips as party favors? Can't wait to see how he ruins this year. <laughs> Had something totally coral planned for my birthday party. You've ruined all my birthday parties, but you better not ruin this one. Now promise me you won't be cheap. <clears throat> I promise. I have no idea how this mistake happened, but first of all, here's a clip of the inside of the Krusty Krab. And as you can see, the tables look like this. This is like the normal table design of the Krusty Krab. It's looked like this ever since Help Wanted, the first ever episode of SpongeBob. But the animators were tweaking in this episode because when Pearl runs into the Patreons of the Krusty Krab crying in this one scene, um, the tables are like plain beige. They're just like this random different coloring design instead of their normal designs. Normally they look like this, but in this one shot, I don't know what they were doing this episode, what was going on at the SpongeBob animation offices, but that's not how the Krusty Krab tables look. So yeah, a big mistake here. And let's keep it moving guys. Let's head over to the next episode. Let's go, let's keep this going.
Our next mistake can be found in the episode Shell of a Man from season four. You know, season four is pretty hit or miss for me because that's when Steven Hillenburg kind of left the show, but I don't hate this episode, it's good. What I don't like about this episode though, as you guys can guess, is the mistake. There's one that's really bad and it's kind of hard to catch. Let's see if you guys can catch it. What's in this thing? Treasure? A treasure trove of sports. <laughs> Why'd you dig up your Navy chest, sir? Well, my Navy buddies and I are having a reunion. This is me manly toughness trophy. Who are those guys? Me shipmates. The toughest bunch to ever sail the briny deep. Did you have a cool nickname, Mr. Krabs? Of course. I was old Armor Abs Krabs. You were? So watch closely, guys. This one, like I said, can be kind of complicated. So when Mr. Krabs shows SpongeBob all of his old Navy treasures, take a look at the left flag in his office with the white and blue triangles, okay? If you watch slowly throughout this scene, this flag and the triangles keep rotating. First it looks like this, then it looks like this, then it looks like this. Very easy to miss because it's in the background of the scene, and I mean like, who cares? I care though, because this is a mistake, and it's a pretty bad one once you catch it. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. First up is the season four episode, Ghost Host. An episode all about SpongeBob and the Flying Dutchman having to stay together after the Flying Dutchman is like too broke to get himself a new place. He crashes his boat, so he has to stay with SpongeBob and he just stays way too long. But anyways, this episode has two mistakes in total. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. <laughs> I'm not scary anymore. Just what kind of talk is that? Dutchie, do you want to spend eternity on this couch? Well, it is comfy. Look in the mirror. You're a ghost of your former self, but we're going to raise you up from your squalid condition. Watch now. What in barnacles is it? A journey into self-awareness. So I want to give credit where credit's due. This mistake was actually pointed out to me by one of you guys in the Grapple Gang, so shout out to you. But during this scene where SpongeBob is going to start the journey into self-awareness video, um, his red tie, which is supposed to be red, is the same color as his skin. His tie is yellow, so I guess the animators accidentally colored his tie in as yellow instead of red, making for a really bad mistake, guys. Like, what? And there's more. There's another mistake in this episode, Roll the footage. I'm a flying Dutchman! <laughs> what are you doing in my house? I'm stuck here while my ship is being repaired. Till then, I'm here to haunt ya! <laughs> People just don't believe in ghosts anymore. Wait a minute. I think you just gave me the answer to all your problems. I heard you don't believe in ghosts. Ghosts? As in the Flying Dutchman! <laughs> Scary. No! No! That's impossible! Two mistakes in one episode. Jeez, Nickelodeon. But when the Flying Dutchman raids Squidward's house, um, the Flying Dutchman has five fingers, as you can see here. Remember this. I'm zooming in. This man has five fingers. But later, when he's at SpongeBob's house, he now only has four. What happened? In this shot, he has five fingers. But then in this shot, he has four. Well, this is a cartoon. I mean, cartoon characters only having four four fingers is kind of a common thing, but it doesn't change halfway through the episode. This was a mistake, and let's keep it moving, guys. Let's head over to the next episode. First up is the episode Funny Pants, and boy, oh boy, does this episode have a lot of mistakes. Like, there's like 10 plus, but for now, we're gonna focus on a couple. Here are some clips. You're burning up, SpongeBob. I am. The temperature is 175 degrees. Is that bad? SpongeBob, you've got to be careful. You're going to burn out your laugh box. My laugh box? If you burn out your laugh box, you'll live your whole life without ever laughing again. Hey, Patrick, you want to hear a joke? Sure, Sandy. I'd love a good laugh. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch it? That first mistake takes place during this scene, during SpongeBob's daydream. When Sandy tells SpongeBob if he wants to hear a joke, as you can see, her tail is there. She's got her tail, her fluffy little squirrel tail. But when SpongeBob says, sure, I'd love a good laugh, and it cuts right back to them, um, where is Sandy's tail? Where'd her tail go? Squirrels don't just randomly lose their tail, guys. I think 
the animators forgot to draw her tail during this scene. And guys, this happens a lot throughout this episode. For example, this scene right here. Roll the footage. Maybe I should ask Sandy. Now, what is laughter? The thing that used to give my life meaning and purpose. But scientifically speaking, it's caused by your epiglottis constricting your larynx, causing irregular air intake and respiratory upset. Sounds painful. Here's some humor theory textbooks, uh, laugh mechanics, and the quantum giggle theory. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, like I said, it happens a lot. During this scene where Sandy pulls down this chart of the body, um, where's her tail again? It's gone. I mean, it's only gone for a split second, but it's still gone. That girl's missing her tail. That's not the only thing she's missing in this episode, guys. As take a look at this scene at the ending of the episode, it's not her tail that's missing this time. It's something else. Can you guys catch it? Leave a comment before I actually show you the mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it on your own. But yeah, roll the footage. Spot Bob, there's no such thing as a laugh. Box. I made the whole thing up. <laughs> He's waking up. Um, where am I? You're in the hospital, silly. You broke your laugh box. So they cut it out. Cut it out? Yeah. Want to see it? It's fun to shake it up and watch it bounce around. Ah! Again, it happens near the ending of the episode. But when SpongeBob wakes up from his coma, um, Sandy's zipper and badge are just missing from her suit. They're just gone. Here's a shot of how it normally looks. As you can see, she has all the designs on her drippy suit. But in this one shot, they're just not there. Again, the animators just didn't draw them. So yeah, they're really doing Sandy dirty in this episode, guys. She's missing her tail twice. And they even messed up on her iconic suit. I feel bad for Sandy. But anyways, let's keep the episode going, guys. Guys, we've got tons of episodes in this video, tons of mistakes, so yeah, stay tuned. Let's head back over to modern SpongeBob for this next one, the good old HD era of SpongeBob. Look at how good this footage looks. I mean, the episodes aren't as good in season 12, but they look really good, that's for sure. But the episode in question is Swamp Mates. Now I'm gonna get right into the mistake for this one. There is one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Put on those mistake glasses, guys. Look for the mistake. Hi, Luther, Cletus. I found them fellas what blowed up our stale. <laughs> If only I had something large and buoyant. Hop on, friend! Friend? Right, buddy? B -b 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 buddy? So take a look at this shot right here. This is how Bubble Bass normally looks. More importantly, this is how his eyes look. It's fairly normal, right? They're normal eyes. Even if we go back to Pickles, his debut episode, he still looks like this, right? You can see this is how his eyes look. Well, in Swamp Mates, when Bubble Bass says our only escape, um, his eyes are the same color as his glasses. What is going on here? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but guys, you know that looks really rough. But this is a mistake, guys, and we've got more. Let's Let's keep the video going. Okay, so our next mistake can be found in another season 13 episode, Squidward's Sick Days. And this one is really funny because when you really think about it, it's actually like a hilarious mistake. Here are the clips, roll the footage. Oh, I can't believe I'm dreaming about work when there's so many more interesting things I could be doing. My unfinished painting, my unfinished symphony, and my uneaten strudel. <laughs> My strudel. So this delicious looking strudel right here, guys. I want a bite of this. Do you want a bite of it? Leave a comment. Would you eat this strudel? I want some of it. But yeah, the strudel, okay? As you can see, there is steam coming off of it, so it's hot, right? Like, they're really animating this strudel as if it's hot. It's steaming hot. But here's the problem. Squidward had just woken up, right? Like, he just woke up during the scene, and we know that he made the strudel the day before, yesterday, right? He made it and then put it out by the window so it would cool the previous day. So how is it hot still? He made the strudel yesterday and he just woke up. The dude didn't just wake up and the strudel was still hot. So this is just a really silly mistake. I hope you guys get what I'm saying for it because this is a bad one. But anyways, during that same scene, there's actually another mistake. I'm gonna roll the clip again really quickly. Did you spot it? Oh, I can't believe I'm dreaming about work when there's so many more interesting things I could be doing. My un 
unfinished painting, my unfinished symphony, and my uneaten strudel. <laughs> My strudel! Yeah, so when Patrick bites into that delicious strudel that is somehow still hot, even though it's a day old, um, Patrick's eyebrows disappear for a split second. It literally only happens for a second as he's eating the pastry, but yeah, talk about two mistakes in one scene, guys. And I have one more mistake from this episode. One more. Oh, yes, I like that. Uh-huh. <gasps> Whitward, you're overexciting yourself! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah! In my imagination, you're a helpless little baby. Gee, you're sicker than I thought. So take a look at this painting right here, okay? As you can see in the painting, SpongeBob is holding a baby Squidward. Aw, Squidward, you're such a cute baby. Now, as you can see, SpongeBob's arm on the left from our viewing perspective is yellow right here. But take a look at his other arm in the picture as it's green. The animator's messed up. His arm's supposed to be yellow, but his arm's the same color as Squidward. Dude, what? This is a really bad one, guys. Look at how awkward that looks, but well, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Up next is a sneaky, sneaky mistake in the episode, Pat the Dog. Roll the footage. <laughs> Patrick's my friend. Sometimes if he's eating worm food by mistake, he goes into worm mode. Well, if he's not trained in a few days so he can be adopted, he'll have to be locked up. He's already housebroken. <laughs> Uh, I knew he was broken. I thought it was house. Sick. Um, almost. Shall we try roll over? Contract, wait! So I already know that this one needs some explaining because it's just a very subtle and complicated error. But when SpongeBob says Patrick wait, if you look closely, his right thumb and arm are only partially outlined and they kind of look a little neon green. Forget about the neon green part though. What really matters here is as you can see on one side of his arm, there's the outline and then the other half where his thumb and the inside of his arm are, they just weren't outlined. It's a very simple mistake. The animators, I don't know what they were doing, but our last episode of today's video has an even crazier mistake. It's one of the craziest ones we've ever covered. Let's get right into it. And last but not least is the episode The Krusty Bucket. This episode has quite the elaborate plot. Here's some clips summarizing what happens in this episode. It'll help make the mistake make a ton more sense. Using the DNA from Krabs' hair, I will create a combo clone of me and Krabs. <laughs> Two-Face, what's the big idea? What have you been doing all this time? Oh, nothing much, -er, just stealing the formula -er, and kicking crabs out on his booty. -er. All it took me, Hardy, was a hearty handshake. Oh, your handshake is exquisite. I'd believe anything you say. Then believe this, Swabby. I'll also be commandeering in the chum bucket from now on. Creepy one eyed crab took me restaurant. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think he took mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Plankton gets into some wacky science in this episode, like he made a clone fusing himself with his arch nemesis, his biggest enemy ever, Mr. Krabs. What's a crazy episode, but you know what's even more crazy? You guessed it, the mistake in this episode, guys. Roll the footage, let's see if you guys can spot it. You guys, fighting! Get out of them, Plankton! It was obviously Krabs' fault! What are you saying with Plankton? Go back to your corners where the bell rings and come out fighting. But first, you gotta shake hands. <laughs> this is a great handshake. This is yet another complicated mistake. I mean, it's not that complicated, but you gotta listen closely or else you'll be like, what are you talking about, Cartoon Cory? But anyways, when Plank Crab, which is like the hybrid clone of Plankton and Mr. Krabs, is splitting up, both red and green Plank Crab have red hands, okay? You can see it right here. I'm zooming in on it. Both red and green Plank Crab have red hands. But after successfully splitting, Red Plank Crab has green 
hands now. So like I said in this shot, dude has red hands, but now he has green hands, which is a bit of an animation mix up here. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it's a mistake. That is for sure. I love this next episode, Enemy in Law, just because the plot is so funny. Plankton falls in love with Betsy Krabs, Mr. Krabs' mom. Imagine having like a mortal enemy and falling in love with their mama, their mama. Plankton, you're crazy. Anyways though, here are some clips summarizing this episode. It's really funny. Everything I do is always wrong in your eyes. Maybe it's because you are always wrong. Why did I ever install that nagging software? Nagging software, I heard that. Why did I ever buy that computer wife? Such beauty. I've never felt like this before. Your gentleman caller awaits. Hello, my dear. I'd like to hear about you. Well... Like the crabs! Eugene! Mommy? Mommy? SpongeBob! Mrs. Krabs in full view of this restaurant. Would you marry me? <gasps> this episode is full of mistakes. You guys know the drill. I'm gonna play some clips and the mistake's gonna be in there. Hopefully you guys can spot it. <clears throat> I've reservations for two tonight. Like this way, sir. You put me boyfriend down this instant. Boyfriend? But mommy. You heard the lady. Let me go. I'm sorry me son had to spoil our romantic evening. You. Eugene. I came to warn you, Plankton. Stay away from me, mother. I know what you're really up to. Now stop trying to get the formula out of me, mother. What are you talking about? So there's actually two mistakes going on here, and it has to do with the interior of the Krusty Krab. So first things first, take a look at this scene where Mr. Krabs barges into the chum bucket in anger, as some scenes show these red pipes on the wall, but then some scenes where we get the same shots are missing the red pipes. So in some shots, there's red pipes. Some shots, there aren't. I don't know what the plumbing situation is in the Krusty Krab, but they need to get that sorted. And that's not it. As when Plankton walks into the Krusty Krab with a rose during this scene, as you can see right here, there is a burger sticker on the window. Now I'm hungry. I really want to go and get myself a McDouble. But the problem is, once Plankton's actually inside the store, there is now no stickers at all. This then happens again when Mr. Krabs walks in. You can see the sticker, the burger sticker, but then from the inside, it's gone. So some continuity errors going on with this scene. Mrs. Puff has to deal with a lot of crap, especially from SpongeBob, one of her worst boating school students. Like seriously, it's been 20 plus years and SpongeBob is still failing that boating exam. And don't get me wrong, I love the little dude, but I do feel sorry for Mrs. Puff. Well, that was until I seen the episode, No Free Rides. An episode that revolves around Mrs. Puff lying and passing SpongeBob on his exam, just so that she doesn't have to deal with him anymore. However, this comes with a bunch of guilt, with this decision risking the safety of pretty much every other Bikini Bottom resident. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene. As you can see, the word accident is shown on a billboard. However, it's spelt incorrectly. Well, it isn't necessarily incorrect, but it's the Spanish spelling of the word, which is incorrect considering this is the US or English version of the episode. In the Spanish version, it's not a mistake, but in this one, this is actually a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. And now back to K-R-U-D with all of your personal You won't get away with stealing my car hits! <laughs> Hey, look! Next up, we have the episode Dying for Pie, a really good episode that unfortunately has two mistakes. The first mistake has to do with Squidward, and it happens at the ending of the episode. You need to see it in slow motion for you to really catch it, but take a look. You want me to explode? Yes! That's what I've been waiting for! Okay, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Gary! You are gonna finish your dessert! And you are gonna like it! So as you just seen, a piece of Squidward's head gets cut off. Like I said, you need to see it in slow motion, but look, it's just missing. There's a chunk of his head just cut off. 
Now to be honest, the other mistake isn't too bad, but it's still a mistake. Now at the beginning of the episode, we see Squidward arrive at work, and look, something's missing. Normally, the Chum Bucket is across the street from the Krusty Krab, as you can see in this shot, and there's even a little path. But in this episode's opening shot, the path and the Chum Bucket are gone. Next up, I've got three mistakes revolving around signs in the Krusty Krab, and these are complicated guys, so listen closely. So as I mentioned earlier, in the Krusty Krab, there is the Galley Grub menu, the menu with all of the different food items. There's also an Order Here sign, okay? But these have major errors throughout the episode. Let's see if you can catch the order here one. Can I have a job application? I brought my own spatula. I called earlier, but I hung up because I was nervous. Do you have references? Wait, if that was you on the phone and you on the bus, who was flickering the lights? <laughs> Nosferatu. Yeah, the animators definitely need to work on their spelling, as they spell order here as order H-E-A-R, and the spelling mistakes don't end there. So Galley Grub is supposed to be spelled as G-A-L-L-E-Y-G-R-U-B. Remember this. But take a look at this shot. Where it will be closing time right about now. Eight o'clock. So long, suckers. I got a hot date with a little lady, and her name is Clarinet. As you've seen, it's misspelt as G A L L Y Grub, missing the E. And it's misspelt again in this shot. Yes, you and me together for hours and hours and hours, and then the sun will come up, and it'll be tomorrow, and we'll still be working. Are you ready? The Rock Squidward! No. Good! Cause we got customers! Yeah. Please hit me as hard as you can. With it being spelt as G-A-L-L-A-Y grub. Another spelling mistake, so pretty funny, but let's move on to another mistake that's even crazier. The opening of the episode Big Pink Loser has a massive mistake. It's really bad, but it's easy to miss. Take a look. Let's see if you guys catch it. Hold still, Gary. Wow. Almost done. Guess what? I got it away! Let's break, Patrick. What's it for? See for yourself! For outstanding achievement and achievement! So here's the thing. Patrick is supposed to come through that door, and we even hear the door open, but as you can see in the slow motion footage, the door never opens. <laughs> Patrick just pops in, he just spawns in randomly, and knocks over the house of cards. Like seriously, listen to it again, and listen for the door opening. They put a door opening sound in, but then didn't animate the door opening. It's really funny. Hold still, Gary! Wow. Almost done! The other mistake is just as bad. Here, take a look. It was sure nice of Mr. Krabs to give me a job. And at $50 an hour, too. When I started working here, I had to pay Mr. Krabs $100 an hour. Do I get my award yet? You have to work for it, remember? Dude, what happened to Patrick's mouth? It's just gone. The animators just forgot to draw his mouth for a frame, and it looks really weird. Okay, so this next one's really funny, as there's two very obvious mistakes in one scene. Let's take a look at this first one. It has to do with SpongeBob's shirt. And I mean, where does it all go? Huh? You know what I mean? What smells rotten? and puts people to sleep. Um, not just gas? No, your act! <laughs> Did you catch it? Well, SpongeBob's missing the white part of his shirt. It's just all brown. Normally, SpongeBob looks like this. He has a white shirt, as you guys already know. But in this one shot, he looks like this. Now, here's the question, though. Did you guys catch the other mistake in this scene? Well, let's take a look at Incidental 40. As you can see, he's wearing a white shirt. What smells rotten? and puts people to sleep. But then when he tries to diss or burn SpongeBob with his weak insult, he's now shirtless. Um, not just gas? No! Your act! <laughs> 
So the animators, they like drew him with a shirt and then seconds later removed his shirt? Talk about a weird mistake. Let's move on. One of my favorite season 2 episodes is Procrastination, an episode where Spongebob needs to write an essay, but the dude just cannot focus, he just cannot get any work done. Gee, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> Come on, Spongebob! It should be against the law to have to write an essay on such a super sailorific sunshiny day. Now this episode has two really funny mistakes. Now the first one has to do with Spongebob's face. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Pants! You get back here this instant! Pants! Um, where is Spongebob's mouth? It's just missing. I think he needs his mouth. Now the other isn't as bad, but let's see if you can catch this one. It has to do with Spongebob's pants, more specifically his belt. Uh, I'm joking! Water! <laughs> Yeah, like I said, not that big of a deal, but Spongebob's belt is supposed to be all black, but one of the parts of his belt is white. Not that big of a deal, but still a mistake. In the season 1 episode, Sandy's Rocket, Patrick makes a major mistake. When him and Spongebob sneak into Sandy's Rocket, and Patrick accidentally starts the engine, thus sending them into space. Well, it turns out, they never actually even went to space. They just crashed back into Bikini Bottom and begin capturing Bikini Bottomites thinking that they're aliens. Eventually, Spongebob starts believing that his best friend Patrick could also be an alien. It's really funny, but let's head back over to this scene for the mistake. When Sandy is showing Spongebob how the net gun works, she blows on the bubbles coming out of the gun. But this, again, wouldn't be possible due to her wearing her air helmet. So she wouldn't be able to like, you know, she wouldn't be able to blow on the bubbles. So another mistake. Here's a clip. Oh, hush, silly. This is for harvesting moon rocks. Well, when you're done playing with rocks, you can use that for some serious alien hunting. Aliens? Are you not- In the episode, Copy Bob Ditto Pants, Plankton comes up with a new scheme. He makes an identical clone of Spongebob, of course to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. But this doesn't go very well when Spongebob, being the friendly sponge that he is, befriends the clone, thus ruining Plankton's scheme without even trying. Now there are a few mistakes in this episode, but the worst one takes place during this scene and has to do with Plankton's computer wife, Karen. It's easy to miss, but the location of Karen's wheels actually change throughout the episode. In some shots, they are beneath the lower platform, while in other shots, they also appear outside the lower platform. Not a big deal, but it's a weird inconsistency I noticed. Here's a clip. More fruit punch, SpongeBob? You know, Plankton, when you invited me over, I thought it was another trick to get the Krabby Patty formula. Now I see, you just love social gatherings in the workplace. <laughs> no, no, Sponge Copy. We don't put dirty, nasty things in our mouth. Spit it out. Our next mistake can be found in another extremely new episode from season 13, titled Patrick the Mailman. This episode is simple. Patrick accidentally crushes the mailman, so he and Spongebob have to take matters into their own hands and decide to deliver the mail around Bikini Bottom themselves. This episode has a great plot and is really funny, so I recommend going and watching it when you get a chance. But there is a mistake that I know you'll miss. Squidward's house is directly to the left of Spongebob's house, right? It's been like that since the very first season. Well, why is it missing during this scene of Patrick the Mailman? Yeah, talk about an obvious mistake, it should be right beside Spongebob's house. We can't even see Patrick's house either, so again, another very obvious mistake. Here's a clip. 
head? You know where this spongy boob sperm panets lives? Never heard of him. Oh well, return to sender. Hey, what's with the new threads? I'm a mailman now! <laughs> I've always wanted to be a mailman. It's like getting to be Santa every day. In the episode, Arg, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs play a board game based on the legend of the Flying Dutchman, which involves an in-game treasure hunt. Well, Mr. Krabs takes things a little too seriously and decides to go on a real treasure hunt. And during the expedition, SpongeBob and Patrick actually find the treasure, despite it not seeming to be real, but Mr. Krabs says that all of the treasure belongs to him, due to him being a cheapskate. As you can imagine, this causes some conflict, but fortunately by the end of the episode, the Flying Dutchman comes to save the day, and gives SpongeBob and Patrick some golden doubloons. It's very funny. On to the mistake though. During this scene, where Spongebob finds Mr. Krabs at his house, it may look as if Mr. Krabs is sitting on the chair, but like look closely and you'll notice that he's actually just floating behind it. We know this as you can see his other red leg behind the chair. Like take a look at his legs. It's a really funny mistake. Here's a clip with audio. The episode, Pearl Wants to Be a Star, is a great episode that's all about Pearl. Our favorite little whale wants to go onto the Patrick Star Show and do a little performance for everybody, but no matter how hard she tries, something always messes it up. As the title suggests, Pearl just wants to be a star, so she keeps on trying and fortunately by the end of the episode, she finally puts on an incredible show. Now I love episodes that focus on characters other than Spongebob, Squidward, Patrick, and Sandy, so I really enjoyed this one. What I didn't really enjoy though was this mistake. During one of Pearl's performances, as she turns, she loses her entire pupil, and boy does it look really weird, it actually looks kinda creepy. Yeah, here's a clip. Yeah. Huh? And last but not least, our final mistake can be found in the very first episode of Season 8. Accidents will happen. In this episode, Squidward has a nasty fall and gets himself injured at work. But this results in Mr. Krabs becoming incredibly paranoid that Squidward is going to sue him. So he starts treating Squidward very different. He starts acting nice and treating Squidward like an actual human being and not just a cashier like he normally does. Now during this scene, where Squidward is seen with the Krabby Patty, the Krusty Krab menu is incorrectly spelt as G-A-L-L-Y grub, when it's actually supposed to be spelled as G-A-L-L-E-Y grub. Also, when the camera returns to Squidward's face and body, both the menu and order here signs are just gone. They've disappeared. I was at the register, giving it a nice shining between orders. When something oh. caught my eye. A patty bun with 10 seeds instead of 11. I wasn't about to stand idly by and allow a customer to go without all his guaranteed nutrients and vitamins. First up is the episode Welcome to Binary Bottom. Now this episode is pretty good. It isn't the best episode, but it has a lot of really funny moments. Take a look at the plot. Imagine if you will, the town of Bikini Bottom. Now imagine if everyone who lived there was a robot. Submitted for your approval. A trip to binary bottom. I'm bad, bad, Morning, SpongeBob. Come for what, SpongeBob? Come for what, SpongeBob? Come for what, SpongeBob? Power down and leave me alone, SpongeBob. I've still got 15 minutes. You're fired. 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 Oh, thank you, Bado. I got stuck in the firing mode. 
how to be fired. <laughs> Damn, Binary Bottom is actually kind of cool. It seems that all of our favorite SpongeBob characters are robots in this world. It's cool. Hey, even Karen, who's normally a computer, is a human in this, which is interesting. But this episode gets pretty hectic once this happens. Take a look. Load up, SpongeBob. Give me two batteries on a barge and make them cry. <laughs> Dude, Robo Sandy is actually pretty scary, and she turns out to be the main antagonist of this episode. Take a look at this clip, but this is where we can find our first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Amazing! Flash photography is forbidden in the present of... This one happens really fast, but watch closely as this dude loses his mouth for about a single frame. It looks really rough. And I have another mistake in this episode. <laughs> Now this one is just funny. So as we see Robo Sandy rise from the water, look, we can see Mrs. Puff is attached to her leg. Poor Mrs. Puff. But literally, and I mean literally the next shot, and Mrs. Puff is also on the shore. So it's like, what? Talk about a massive mistake. And stay tuned guys, because I've got some crazier ones coming up in this The Title Zone special. Oh boy, this next episode really packs a punch, probably because it's all about karate. Here, take a look at the plot. It's a really good one. Who is this intruder that fails to attack me? That's my friend, SpongeBob SquarePants. Whoa. Do you know karate? He doesn't just know karate, he is karate. Fuzzy's here to test me for the highest belt in karate. But Sandy, you already have a black belt. Yes, but there's one even higher than that, the blacker belt. Gee, if you want a belt, you must earn it. Okay. But how can anyone ever truly know whether he or she is worthy? It is simple. I conduct a series of tests, and if you pass, I will give you a belt that shows you know karate. Like I said, the episode has a really cool plot, with SpongeBob training to get his karate belts, and he does in the end. But at the same time, there's also a mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Yeah! Sensei Fuzzy, are you okay? I was wrong about you, SpongeBob. You are now a karate master. Here. For me? You are terrible. Oh, God. Sandy, what's wrong with Fuzzy? I know what he needs. He just needs this. <laughs> This one is really bad, but as you can see, Sandy's entire body like duplicates for a frame. And no, this isn't like an animation technique. This was a straight up mistake. And here's another one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Boy, I can't wait to show Sandy my new karate move. Ah! Oh, Sandy! Oh! Sandy's in trouble. Don't worry, Sandy. I'm coming to save ya. Yeah, yeah, this one admittedly isn't as bad, but, um, why is Spongebob's teeth yellow? A fairly common Spongebob error, but it's still a mistake, and it's still worth mentioning, and the one coming up in this next episode is crazy! Gary the Snail is a very cute and, honestly, harmless pet, right? Well, that's what I thought until I seen the episode once bitten. Take a look at this. Hey, Spongebob. Keep your shell vermin off of my property! You leave me no choice but to call snail control! That little monster! <laughs> he bit me! Gary! No, dirty boy, this isn't like you! You mean your pet hasn't been vaccinated for mad snail disease? The bite from that infected snail will turn you into a zombie! <laughs> 
Yeah, in this episode, Gary is wildin'. And this scene is where we can find our first mistake in this episode. It has to do with this old lady. I want you guys to watch these clips and see if you can spot the mistake on your own. I'm a zombie, here to die on your squishy yellow flag. Okay, so this one's pretty simple. As you can see, this nice old lady right here is wearing a purple dress. It actually looks pretty nice on her. But literally seconds later, and her dress has magically changed from purple to a green dress, thus making for some lazy continuity errors right here. Of course though, that ain't it. I have another one, take a look at these clips, and let's see if you can spot the mistake, let's go. All those people think you're a monster, but I know you're just a snail. Gary, how could you? SpongeBob's been infected by his own pet snail. Oh, the irony! Yeah, this one is very straightforward, but SpongeBob is missing his legs. You can tell by the angle that his legs just were not drawn, which was a very lazy move by the animators. Not a big deal, but pretty lazy. Our next mistake can be found in the episode, Bossy Boots, but let's just get right into it as it's kind of complicated. So during this scene, as you can see, there is this car in the background, okay? It's there. <laughs> Now, as the scene progresses and Pearl and SpongeBob leave the shot, that car that we just seen disappears. It's a shame old man crab sold the crusty crab. Hey, lady! Do you know where we can get something to eat around here? That's it! I quit! It didn't drive away because it happens in like seconds. It seems the animators drew it, as you can see here, but then forgot to include it in the next shot, thus giving us a weird mistake. And hey, that ain't it, as during this scene, we have another mistake. So as you can see, in this picture of a sea unicorn, the sea unicorn has a horn on its head. You can see it right here. Reduces stress for only five easy payments at $9.95. Mr. Krabs, Pearl is ruining the Krusty Krabs! But for some reason, later on in the shot, the horn just disappears during this shot. Pearl is saving the Krusty Krabs! What would we do without these beautiful $20 sea unicorn wall hangers? The animators just forgot to draw it again, thus making for another really weird mistake. Like, geez, this episode is full of mistakes, and guys, I've got some crazier ones coming up, so stay tuned. Next up, I have two Gary the Snail themed mistakes. They're pretty bad. I have no idea how the animators missed them. Let's take a look at this first one and see if you guys can spot it. Now, Gary, we can do this the hard way or the easy way. Or the medium way. Or the semi-medium easy hard way. Or the sort of hard with a touch of awkward, easy, difficult, challenging way. So that's how you want to play it, huh? It's new toy! Fetch! Huh? New boomerang pet ball really works. This one is interesting, especially because it happens really fast. But as most of you guys know, this is how Gary's eyes look. They're red. They're beautiful. Gary has some beautiful eyes, but they're red, okay, as you can see right here. But for one frame in this shot, Gary's eyes are purple and they look really weird. I have no idea how the animators made this mistake because it's for one frame, but it's pretty bad. And there's more. Let's see if you guys can catch it. So if I can't get you to come to the bath, I'll just have to bring the bath to you. <laughs> bath delivery. This one is a lot less complex. Pretty much, normally Gary's eyelids look like this. They're like the same color as the stems of his eyes. They're like blue or purplish. But in the episode Gary takes a bath, there's one scene where his eyelids are pink, which is a massive mistake that's not right. So yeah, another mistake. Gary. 
bath delivery. When it comes to his job at the Krusty Krab, Squidward is pretty darn lazy. I mean, not only does he often hate being there, but he's also always looking for ways to slack off and falling asleep. Well, that is, until the episode Employee of the Month. In this episode, Spongebob gets his 26th consecutive Employee of the Month award, and wants to get his 27th, but this results in a very competitive rivalry between him and Squidward, with them both resorting to some cheap tactics to get the win. Heck, at one point, Squidward traps Spongebob in a damn cage. But anyways, onto the mistake. During this scene, where Spongebob and Squidward are racing to the Krusty Krab, there is a mistake with the door. Okay, this one's a little complicated, but normally the handles of the Krusty Krab door look like this. They're golden or brown, the handle, the part you grab to open the door. However, seconds later, when they go into the restaurant, the handles are now clear and look nothing like they're supposed to look like, so yeah, definitely a mistake here. To be fair, it's season one, but definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. Money, money, gonna make some money. Plankton is a bit of a miserable person to be around. I mean, he's always trying to pull off some sort of scheme, and honestly, I don't blame a lot of other Bikini Bottomites for hating the guy. To be fair though, he does have to put up with a lot of BS, I mean his wife is a computer, so I do have some sympathy for Plankton, and it seems I'm not the only one as this is what the episode fun is all about. In this episode, Spongebob makes an effort to become Plankton's friend. But of course, due to Plankton's urge and addiction to steal the secret formula, this friendship doesn't last very long. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene. It's a little hard to make out in video, but take a look at this image. For about a frame in this episode, Spongebob's belt is not only on top of his shirt, but it's also white when it's supposed to be black. I'm gonna show a video version, in the video it's a little blurry, but as you can see in this image, it's definitely white. Here's a clip. Tartar sauce. Our first mistake can be found in the very new Season 13 episode, Say Aw. This episode only came out a few days ago, so it's completely new. But yeah, in this episode, Plankton notices that instead of fearing him, most Bikini Bottomites just think that he's cute and harmless. And as you can imagine, this really gets on Plankton's nerves. Now the mistake in question has to do with both the Chum Bucket and the Krusty Krab. As most of you know, the Chum Bucket and Krusty Krab are directly across from one another, and there is also a path running between them. Now, earlier in this episode, we get a clear shot of this path right here, as you can see it's there. But for some reason during this scene later on, the locations have completely changed, with the Krusty Krab not being directly in front of the Chum Bucket and being much farther than it's supposed to be. There's like an entire path in between them now, but yeah, definitely a mistake. Here's a clip.
In the episode Pre-Hibernation Week, Sandy prepares for hibernation, and SpongeBob happily agrees to play some sports with her to have one last little fun play session before she goes in for her long sleep. They're not going to be able to hang out for a while. SpongeBob soon regrets it though, as Sandy puts SpongeBob in all sorts of dangerous situations. And from here, the episode focuses on a stressed out SpongeBob, hiding from Sandy to avoid playing more dangerous sports with her. It isn't necessarily my favorite episode, but I love the scenes of Sandy and SpongeBob competing with each other. What I don't love so much though, is this mistake. During the scene where Sandy is getting mad at Bikini Bottomites, there is a brief shot where her neck is incorrectly colored as white, when it should be brown. Here's a clip. Man the night boats! Alpha Team, you search uptown! Gold Team searches downtown! Any questions? Gold Team rules! Sides, he's yellow! Yeah, uh, here he is! Hey, can I go home now? Oh, look! He's up in the sky! Well, he's not... Wants to go on to search some more. In the episode Rock Bottom, Patrick and SpongeBob end up taking the wrong bus after spending an awesome day full of fun at the glove themed amusement park known as Glove World, their favorite place. But once they leave, they end up in the abysmal zone of Rock Bottom. This place is the definition of weird or creepy, and while Spongebob does escape the place by the end of the episode, he is trapped in the creepy location for a majority of the episode. Now, this one is a classic, and is probably one of my favorite Spongebob episodes ever, but it does have a mistake, as you can guess. When we first see Spongebob and Patrick get scared, for a single frame, one of Spongebob's pupils is missing as he blinks. Pretty weird. Here's a clip. Uh, that's an easy one, Patrick. Uh, just wait for someone to come out and then you'll know. The episode Reef Blower is not only very short, but it's also a silent episode with no dialogue. This is the second episode of the show to air ever, and it's interesting to imagine if all episodes of the show were like this one. But anyways, let's talk about the mistake. It isn't that big of a deal, I guess, considering this is literally the second episode of the show ever, but during this scene, Squidward is shown sitting on a doorstep in front of his house. However, this doorstep doesn't actually exist, it doesn't show up in any other scenes during this episode, or any other episodes after. It just doesn't really exist except for this one shot. I guess this isn't necessarily a mistake because it's from an early episode before locations were fully established, but it's definitely weird. And the fact that it doesn't appear at all in any other scenes is kind of a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. <laughs> When Mr. Krabs finds a hole in the Krusty Krab in the episode The drive Through, he comes up with a very good idea from a business perspective. He turns the hole into a drive through thus offering customers a new drive through option at the Krusty Krab. As you can imagine though, like most of Mr. Krabs' changes to the Krusty Krab, this doesn't go very well, when both Spongebob and Squidward struggle to keep up with all of the drive through orders. Well, during this scene, there's a mistake, as when Spongebob is seen carrying a good 15 orders out to customers, there's something going on with his leg as it's incorrectly colored as white for about a fraction of a second. It isn't that big of a deal, but it looks pretty weird. Uh, 
Six orders up. No, 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 not that way. No, the other one. Squidward, are you sure? When a nasty storm hits Bikini Bottom and pretty much traps SpongeBob Squidward and Mr. Krabs and the Krusty Krab in the episode Pull Up a Barrel, Mr. Krabs decides to tell some Navy Day stories to help pass the time. As you can imagine, Squidward and SpongeBob aren't very interested, but Mr. Krabs' story follows a young Mr. Krabs and is fairly entertaining, so rather than spoil it, let's just talk about a sneaky mistake. In this episode, every SpongeBob character has their own counterpart, and if you look at Sandy's, she isn't wearing an air helmet. As you guys know, Sandy is like a squirrel, a real animal, she isn't a sea creature, so she would be drowning right now because she's not wearing the air helmet, so definitely a mistake, a weird one too. Here's a clip. Join me, Krabs! We'll rule the seven seas together! I can't let you go, Les. I'd be in violation of the naval code. Enjoy your last meal. I hope you like sponge sugar. And last but not least, our final writing error comes from the season 11 episode titled Squid Noir. In this episode, Squidward loses his clarinet, which causes Squidward to go on a detective-style mission to find it. It's pretty cool. After questioning almost everyone in Bikini Bottom, Squidward eventually finds his clarinet lost in jellyfish fields, and he happily retrieves it. Now, from here, the episode ends with Squidward playing his clarinet, and it not only attracts, but also pleases and makes Jellyfish happy. However, if we head back to Season 2's Jellyfish Jam, we learned that Jellyfish hate Squidward's clarinet playing, and will actively attack him if he plays, so yeah, I guess the writer of this episode hasn't watched Season 2, go watch Season 2. I'm going to show a clip with audio, but before I do, you guys know the drill, shout out to the Grapple Gang Baby. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, and if you're at the premiere, shout out to you even more, say something in chat. By the way, if you're new to the channel though, and you want me to respond to your comment, make sure to subscribe, as I'll be responding to the comments of all subscribers on this video. Only if you're subscribed though, YouTube will show me if you're subscribed, so yeah. Anyways though, here's those clips, I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys again soon. I love you guys. Peace. Squidward, yeah! Yeah, Squidward! And that's how it ended. Clarinet returned, case closed. Another mystery solved by Squidward Tentacles, Jazz Detective. Oh, come on. Just fall back. Trust me, I'll catch you. <laughs> I've said this before, but SpongeBob Season 4 is very underrated. You know, it's when Steven Hillenburg, like, kind of left the series, so some episodes are a little meh, but there's also really good episodes. And the episode New Leaf, in my opinion, is one of those episodes where Plankton pretends to turn a new leaf and not be evil anymore. Take a look at some of these scenes showing the episode's plot, and then we'll get right into the mistakes. What about all those fevered attempts at trying to steal my Krabby Patty recipe? Exactly! They've all been just attempts! And every single one! A miserable failure! Glad you could make it, buddy! So, what's this about, Krabs? I thought that since we're no longer arch enemies, maybe... maybe we can start over? You know, it's funny because Mr. Krabs could tell that Plankton was capping. He just knew. Anyways, though, it's mistake time. Here's the first one. <laughs> I never give you the formula! 
So as you guys just seen, at one point, Plankton opens this gotcha letter from Mr. Krabs, alright? Mr. Krabs pranked him, and then Mr. Krabs bursts through the door of the chum bucket. Now, the problem here is that the door is randomly transparent with, like, rectangular knobs, when in every other shot it's with round windows. So I highly doubt that Plankton did some, like, interior designing to his restaurant. Totally a mistake. And here's another one from New Leaf. This one happens really quick, but near the ending when Plankton gets the formula and laughs like a crazy person, his mouth actually just disappears for a frame. Like, look at this mouthless Plankton right here. My dude is just missing his mouth because the animators didn't draw it for a frame.